It is a very warm welcome to Fox Sports to the one and only John Kavanagh, head coach and founder of Straight Blast Gym in Ireland and uh, home of uh, many great martial artists, most notably, of course, the former two-division UFC champion, uh, the notorious Conor McGregor. He's also co-founder of the Wimp to Warrior training program. John, thanks very much for coming on, mate. It's a pleasure. Um, a lot to discuss today, of course, but I'd be mm -hmm. remiss if I didn't ask first uh, about the notorious one. How is Connor? How is his uh, recovery going? And when can we expect him back? Yeah, I think the, the physical stage of recovery is pretty much complete now. He'll be very soon switching over to starting to train mixed martial arts again. That's, that's when all the fun begins. Um, you've seen his post there himself. He's... You don't have to uh, wonder what he's doing. He posts about it. He's been enjoying himself over Christmas, but he's ready to enter that more serious phase of training and um, not, not enjoy the good life as much and, and get back in the gym and start getting ready for another contest. Well, he's looking absolutely huge. He's bigger than he was at 170. I've got to ask, is 155 still the preferred division for you guys? Will he make that cut again? Yeah, I don't think it'll be all that difficult, to be honest. He's made some fairly dramatic weight cuts in the past. Uh, 55 seems to suit his frame pretty well. So at the moment, yeah, maybe light heavyweight he's, he's more <laughs> suited towards. But I think by the time it's probably summertime or looking at uh, for him to step back in there, the weight will be back down again. Well, if we are looking at a summertime, like a, a mid-year return, it's probably not going to be for the lightweight title right away. Charles Oliveira, Justin Gaethje, likely to contest the belt at UFC 274 in May. If it were up to you, who does he fight next? Uh, you know, I, I'm just excited to see him back in there. It's always, it's always a, a, a big occasion. There's not much like a McGregor fight week and a, and a McGregor fight night. Um, there's, there, it doesn't really matter. You say any name and it's exciting. Probably the Diaz trilogy would be, would be a, a fan favorite. Um, but yeah, let, let's, let's, let's just get him back healthy, back ready and, and back competing. It sounds great. A casual, I often, the common sentiment around Conor McGregor, particularly around, I guess, the more casual MMA fan is that always oh, past his prime. But I often say that it might sound a bit funny, but I don't think we've seen the best Conor McGregor return, if that makes sense. I feel like after the Habib loss, took a year and a half out, fought Cowboy, absolutely dusted him, but, you know, fought him at a weight class uh, that wasn't sort of the weight <coughs> class that he wanted to be in. Uh, it didn't really have so like a lot of, I guess, competitive bearing in terms of rankings, and then took another year off. Fort Dustin employed that boxing stance that we saw, which he later explained was because he was using that as a tune-up fight for Manny Pacquiao. He then vows to take him seriously mid-year and he breaks his leg in the first round. It's just a series of unfortunate events for Connor. How frustrating has that been for you as his coach? Uh, very, in a word. Um, especially the last one because the, the training camp re went really well. I thought we made great adjustments. Um, you know, take my obvious bias subjectivity out of it and just look at how the first round was going in terms of shots landed. Connor was a like, I believe almost two to one on the shots landed standing. Went for a guillotine, ended up on his back, but defended himself well on the ground. I thought if we went into the second round, it would continue how it was looking on the stand up portion of the fight, which was Connor landing quite well. And when Connor tends to land, people tend to fall. So I was fairly confident how, how it, would, it would play out in the second round or maybe the third round. And then just as I'm picking up the bucket and I'm walking towards the gate, uh, I see him sitting on the ground. I wasn't too sure what had happened. And obviously what transpired is he just caught that, caught that leg uh, badly and, and broke it. And, but thankfully now that's all healed up. And as he says, he has a titanium shin to throw at people's heads moving forward. So uh, who knows? Might be positive at the end of it all. Uh, we can't wait. It's certainly better for the UFC uh, when Conor McGregor is back and fighting and having a good time. Uh, last one, John, on Conor. Um, one of my co-hosts on this show, Alexander the Great Volkanovsky, uh, around the time of UFC 266. Uh, they had a bit of back and forth, he and Conor, uh, on social media. Is that a fight that you guys would be interested in, interested in whether at featherweight or any other weight division? It's very unlike Connor to have a, a back and forward with another <laughs> UFC fighter. Very usually very quiet and reserved. Um, yeah, look, like like I said, uh, he's he's won a couple of belts at this stage. He's 
He's, he's earned all the money he was going to earn. Um, well, he's going to earn more money, but, you know, he's, he's, he's achieved all those targets, I'm sure he set himself, and, and exceeded them. So now at this stage, I, I believe it's more about exciting fights and, um, you know, it, 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 doing, doing other things. So whether it's Volkanovski or it's, uh, it's um, you know, Holloway, it's Tony Ferguson, it's, it's Diaz. For me, the important thing is, is just to get, get back training, get back improving ourselves and get back in there competing, doing what he does best. It's best to ask his coach about this. Will he ever make the cut to 145 again? No. Nah. Okay. Good, good to I hear. don't see that. Okay. Um, well, such is Connor's transformation that I'll tell you what, he might actually have a chance against one of the other co hosts on this show, Robert Whittaker, uh, who is in action, um, of course, uh, in a couple of weeks' time. UFC 271, what a matchup, what a rematch. This is going to be huge for this region. How do you see that playing out, and how excited are you by this matchup? Very. Uh, you know, they obviously met and it went the way it went. And since then, they both have had, um, you know, a couple of good outings. Uh, Whitaker for me is, is, I love watching him. And he's just kind of that hardworking guy, you know, head down, humble, hardworking guy. You feel that all the great skills he had came through long, long hours in the gym, really pushing himself. Israel may be a bit more uh, gifted and things came to him maybe a little bit easier. Uh, I, I, hate to, I hate to pick one over the other because I, I, I think they're both fantastic fighters, but I probably, due to the way they match up, due to stylistic reasons, um, I would lean towards uh, Israel repeating what he did before already. Um, but that's not to say it's not a, a fit, maybe 55-45 fight. It's, it's very, very close. Whitaker's had some great wins uh, since, since that uh, loss. Um, but Izzy is just, I just think he's very, very special, you know. Only that one slip when he went up a weight class, since then looking phenomenal. And he just has an air of invincibility around him. And he just has a grace of movement that's a joy to watch. So, yeah, as much as I hate to say, yeah, I would, <laughs> I'd lean toward, towards the, uh, the style bender. Well, it's so interesting that you bring up tactics. It's not every day that you get to pick the brain of one of the most successful coaches in the game. So let's get into tactics for that fight. Um, for the longest time, I guess it's it's been oft repeated that, um, or oft suggested perhaps, that Israel Adesanya's weakness uh, is potentially on the ground. As you mentioned, Jan Blahovic had some success in that area. Would you say that that is the key to victory for Robert Whittaker, utilising his grappling and his wrestling and his jiu-jitsu? Absolutely. You know, if he goes in with the same plan as last time, and he's a fantastic striker, he's had great success with that against other opponents. But I just don't think he's going to be able to do that to Izzy. Izzy is just an absolute sniper. Um, he, everything seems to move in slow motion for him. So I don't think it'll be any great uh, secret. You know, even looking at the, the, the big heavyweight boys there last week in Nganu, mm. what happened? He turned into a wrestler. <laughs> and, uh, you know, both guys are very good strikers, but the, it eventually became down to the wrestling. And I'm sure Whitaker and his team have been, have been breaking down that uh, Jan fight and, and seeing if they can use those tactics because I, I do think if it becomes a kickboxing match, a match it is is he again. Possibly if Whitaker, he doesn't have Jan's size, let's, let's be honest, but possibly if he can bring in a grappling-heavy approach, um, maybe he can get, maybe he can do it. But that's not to say that is he didn't look comfortable and, and he, you know, he's defending himself well, well against a big, heavy, light heavyweight. So to be back in there with middleweights, maybe he can do well on the ground too. So it's it's... It's a super close matchup, and it's one of those fights which make MMA very special. You know, there's a lot of matchups, especially in the boxing world, where we kind of know going in, it's, this is going to be very one-sided. Whereas with MMA, we repeatedly have these fights where it's hard to call who's going to be the winner. And uh, I suppose it's those the fans that are the real winners. Yeah, last one, I guess, on this fight. Uh, you mentioned Rob's improvement. You know, he's just been on a, a killer's row. He, he didn't cry, didn't uh, ask for the immediate rematch uh, after he did lose to Israel, but he went and beat, he beat Kelvin Gastelum, Darren Till, Jared Cannonier, of course. Um, what, a, what a group. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. He's just going on a, an absolute tear. Um, 
if you are Eugene Berman and the, the team of Israel are death on you, what are you, what are you doing, what are you telling your fighter uh, to do in order to avoid not losing that belt that you have against a fighter who's coming back with a vengeance? Be Izzy. Be, be like water. Do what he does. Uh, don't be, you know, I wouldn't be overly concerned about him bringing a grappling heavy matchup. Most guys have tried to grapple Izzy at some level. He's, there's not really, I don't see anyone anyway in the middleweight class that's able to trouble him in that area. But, you know, you're going to take some comfort. Even look at the scenes we're looking at there. Certainly Whitaker has that, that ability to do that. Um, but I, 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 I certainly wouldn't be overly trying to fill him with fear and, and worry about a range that maybe there's a perceived weakness in because I don't really think there is. He's, like I said, he slipped against a big, strong, light heavyweight. No middleweights being able to even come close to doing that. And, you know, most of Whitaker's uh, fights are one on the feet. He's kind of has that explosive in and out kickboxing style. So, um, yeah, Izzy, just be Izzy. Go, go do what Izzy does. Just be Izzy. Uh, that's great advice. Well, speaking of Izzy, seen him on a couple of promotional videos on your website that is the wimp to warrior website um a big project of yours and uh, some might remember uh the old show with with jens pulver that aired right here on fox sports many many years ago um you guys have continued the program uh in gyms across the globe and uh for those who are new to it i guess what can you tell us about wimp to warrior and why you've decided to build it up uh the way that you have yeah so that's that's actually why i'm out here uh in Sydney, doing a bit of promotional work. We're, we're relaunching under a new brand. You can see I'm boldly wearing the T-shirt here, trainalta.com. You can go on there and read all about it. But what, what it's about is about giving, there's a massive number of fans of MMA worldwide. And I can't think over the last decade or two how many times I've been contacted by fans saying, I'd love to give it a go, but it's, it's an intimidating um, prospect of walking into a gym and not really knowing what to expect, whereas... The great um, part of the Warrior Trainer Program is, is that you get a group of 20, 30, 40, 50 people all starting together day one, all starting different shapes and sizes. We've had a bunch of grandmothers and grandfathers mm -hmm. do this. You're taken step by step through a 100-day program, and the culmination is that you have the opportunity, if you wish, to do your first amateur MMA fight. And you know, there's some dramatic physical changes that happen over that 20 week period. But for me, the most exciting part is that the mental health changes that come through uh, combat sports. I think there's no better way of of gaining confidence and learning new skills than through combat sports. It's it's kind of like the world's uh, best kept secret that I, I believe the, be, uh, the some of the best health benefits are in combat sports academies. And what we're trying to do at trainalta.com is to make it a bit have an easier on-ramp for people that are, you know, maybe haven't done sports in a long time or, or ever, for that matter. We've had plenty of people come in in their 30s that haven't done anything at all, but love the idea of mixed martial arts. Everybody at some stage was kind of interested in, in Bruce Lee or Van Damme or, or you know, depending. On, and, and now with the massive promotions like UFC and Bellator and 1FC, uh, more and more people are interested in trying this at some level. And, and here we are. We have this program all over the world now. Start, obviously started in, in Australia by a, by a UK guy that moved here. Richie Cranny did an amazing job with the program. And now it's actually exploding worldwide. And it's, uh, it's not slowing down. Are you enjoying, like, Australia seems to have taken to it very, very well. Um, is there a particular reason that it was Australia? Like, why, why such a focus on us here in our backyard? Yeah, who would have thought uh, Aussies would like having a dust-up? That's uh, <laughs> re truly shocking news. It's like saying Irish people enjoy having the odd beer, you know? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah I, to be honest, I, it, it, it began here, and that's, that, you know, that's where it started, and that's, I, I believe, why it has the biggest foothold here. But I don't think it's going to be any different when we move more strongly into North America and spread across Europe and, and everywhere else in the world. I think at some stage in everybody's life, they're interested in learning how to defend themselves and want to test themselves in, in, in the, let, the ultimate proving ground. It's, it's having a, a, a confrontation, a fight of, of some sorts in a, in a controlled and safe way. And a uh, few things will test you like uh, preparing for, training for, and then eventually 
having a, as one, what one guy called it, a, an organized confrontation. So I just think it's something in our DNA that in school growing up, it was, you know, which kid was the fastest kid and which kid was the best fighter. They, they were the two year that, that kind of stood out on the schoolyard. And let's be honest, we're all just kind of large grown up kids. <laughs> Is a certainly uh, relate to that, I'll tell you that. Um, John, <laughs> you uh, certainly seem to have a lot on your plate, I think it's fair to say. As you mentioned, you're tra training, you're coaching, rather, you know, some 60 uh, pro MMA fighters. Uh, I've got to ask you about your, your passion for coaching. What inspires you, I guess, to remain involved in projects like the Wimp to Warrior and just keep, I guess, you know, meeting new people and, and coaching them to the best they can be? You know, as a coach, I got incredibly lucky getting um, not just Connor, but a group of guys like him early on in my in my career. In terms of coaching, I'm probably still young-ish, being uh, I just turned 45 uh, two weeks ago. Um, but I kind of got to achieve a lot of uh, the goals I sort of set out early on with you know winning a, a UFC championship and an Ultimate Fighter trophy and then a, a bunch of European titles and so on. And what the uh, the Warrior Training Program kind of brought back to me is actually why I get into martial arts to begin with. It was mm. to try and give people, because it's what I got from it, was to try and give people self-confidence. I don't think there's a better um, tool for improving your self-confidence and, and your self-belief than combat sports. And now, as I've been doing this for a couple of years, and we have pretty big programs, it's sort of almost a running joke that myself and, and Eugene over at City Kickboxing, we both regularly break 100 people doing each season. And there's a bit of a friendly rivalry who has the record. And I think it's my record at the moment, but I'm sure he'll, he'll, he'll get ahead of me uh, soon enough. Um, but, you know, look, it's all these messages we get from people that maybe didn't fit in at other sports or not too interested in running on a treadmill, but they found this, which was great for their physical health. And like I said, most importantly, at the end of it, being able to use the skills and, and learning to be comfortable in a very uncomfortable situation, learning how to defend yourself and applying that to other areas of their lives, whether that's dealing with a bad relationship or, or you, you know, changing, having the, uh, the courage to go for a different job because they're miserable in the, in the one they're in. And look what we're, the situation we've gone through over these last two years. Talk about learning how to deal with uncomfortable situations. And thankfully, it, it would appear we're kind of coming out the other end of that now and gyms are filling back up again. So what a great opportunity to try something different, try something new, a new you for 22. Um, <laughs> That's actually a good phrase there, isn't it? New you for 22. I'm going yeah. to make a t-shirt out of that. Quickly, yeah, get on that as soon as you can. Uh, John <laughs> Kavanaugh, I'll tell you what, what a pleasure it is. You're an inspiration to many. I've got to thank you so much for your time here on Fox Sports. We really appreciate it. Can't wait to see everyone get back involved, uh, particularly Conor McGregor. You know, the world is watching. The world is waiting. We can't, just, can't wait to see what you guys come up with and uh, all the best for the future. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. We'll see you soon.